Joining us tonight is Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, author of the book Spygate, The Attempted Sabotage of Donald J. Trump, available for pre-order now, we might point out, and we recommend it to you highly. Uh, Dan, good to have you with us. Let's start with, first of all, the preparations for the storm and already a, uh, if you will, kinetic political atmosphere that surrounds the storm, uh, the left, uh, whether in the media or whether on Capitol Hill, preparing their attacks for President Trump and his government. Yeah, Lou, this is a new low. Uh, I mean, just when you think you've reached a bedrock of lows in politics, we crack through the bedrock and we move towards like the core of the depravity earth of politics. I mean, we're politicizing storm events now. This is so disturbing. And, and Lou, I, I have to tell you, I, I was glad to see you push back. Listen, let's just get it out there. There is no doubting, period, full stop, the tragic events that happened in Puerto Rico or the fact that people died and the event was an, a, a, a massive human tragedy. Everybody understands that. No doubt. But why was this information being released right before a hurricane made landfall in the Carolinas with a study that used a computer simulation? And we've never seen this before on a mass scale, this posting of fatalities after a hurricane. You have to ask yourself, why was this being done? Right. Is it not a fair question for Donald Trump to, to, to fight back a bit and say, hey, we did what we could do with FEMA. It wasn't perfect. But I can't deliver these. Pro I'm a little fired up about this. I'm sorry if I'm going on a bit here. But what do you want Donald Trump to do? Deliver the water bottles himself and the supplies, Lou? I yeah. don't blame him for fighting back one bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame him either. But I do blame the national media uh, for not doing the job they are supposed to do, which is to examine and skeptically look at what is being reported. But instead, uh, the left-wing media has become a herd that simply talks about 3,000 uh, deaths as if it were a fact. It's not only not a fact, it's not even reasonably based on fact or evidence. And, it, and there's absolutely uh, this only the scantest of mention the fact that these numbers come out a year after that tragic event in Puerto Rico. People died, people were killed. And the people who should, I, in, my, in my opinion, uh, be held accountable, include the mayor of San Juan. They include the, the governor of Puerto Rico. And what happened to all of the supplies that were delivered? And why is no one taking note that this president sent in military forces that stayed there longer than they've stayed on the scene of any other natural disaster in the country's history uh, and is not given credit for it? This is, this is a sickness that has gripped the minds of the Jeff Bezos and others who control major fake news outlets. Lou, it's infuriating. And a basic internet search here, Lou, I'm not talking about advanced level investigative journalism here. A basic internet search of the local failures on the ground, the hoarding of rescue equipment, the hoarding of supplies, the water bottles left on the runway, the food rotting in warehouses, a basic internet search would show you that the United States government, although obviously not perfect in their response, did what they could do when there were epic logistical failures on the ground where the locals were. But right. instead of doing that basic internet search, it's more convenient for them to target Donald Trump. And Lou, one more thing on this sure. that's really bothering me. You know, I really get tired of these social media outrage campaigns all the time and these weak-kneed, spineless, jellyfish Republicans who jump right, right on the bandwagon and say, oh, yeah, that's right. You know what? Poor, uh, let's go after Trump should have never responded. No, he should have responded. The Absolutely. American people elected him because they're tired of phony media narratives and nonsense narratives put out there. And I'm, I'm really upset that people fall into this trap every time. It was a massive tragedy. Yeah. There's no doubt. Well, but I'm gonna, the effort by the media was not to get answers. Well, I'm going to name names. Trump. Rick Scott running for Senate in Florida uh, uh, and uh, Ron DeSantis uh, running for the governorship of Florida. Both instantly uh, took the side against the man who is pushing their candidacies uh, and without any reason, without any skeptical judgment, without any analysis, without the knowledge of the facts, and sided with those who wanted to go with the highest number, irrespective of whether they were based in reality or fact or anything close to reason. They were not. They were extrapolations of the wildest form by two universities. I am sad to say Harvard University 
uh, and its uh, public uh, its public policy uh, school and and George Washington University and the Milken Institute. It, it, it's a disgrace what they did. They should be ashamed of themselves, and they should be apologizing to the American public and the people of Puerto Rico who've had to go through this now again, the number of deaths, and uh, without, again, evidence, without death certificates, without burials, uh, without a, any factual basis for an analysis of what is uh, Puerto Rico's, one of its greatest yeah. tragedies uh, in its history. It's a shame, as you say. Uh, turning to it the is. national media, Dan, uh, this president has had to fight fake news. Now comes Jeff Bezos again. Uh, and the president and Bezos do not, I think it is safe to say, get along or share a worldview. But the, the fact is that Bezos is saying that presidents and governors should be uh, expect to be held to scrutiny. What he does through his paper is subject this president to personal attack day in and day out, seven, eight articles uh, every single day attacking this president and his uh, administration. You know, uh, Lou, this is almost comical. Like, Bezos needs to look in the mirror. We just had a story today, although not Bezos's outlet, but the New York Times, a complete, utter fake news story implicating Nikki Haley in Curtain Gate, the purchase of <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. In now, again, not the Washington right. Post, to be fair, but we've seen this in the Washington Post before, insinuations about collusion and other things. And again, it goes back to the prior story here, where prior weak-kneed jelly fish Republicans with no spines would say, oh, hey, back off. Yeah. Don't fight people who buy ink by the barrel. The American people are tired of that. They're yeah. sick of it. They are happy that this guy, President Trump, goes out there and says, you know what? Nah, I'm not taking this crap. Fake news. Put a little fake news siren on it. Point it out and make them correct themselves. Bezos needs to look in the mirror. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the president himself, uh, he knows what uh, the American people are thinking. He knows that they they get the joke and that they have had a belly full of this nonsense, whether it's coming from a Bezos outlet or, or a Carlos Slim outlet. Uh, the nonsense is uh, just about, I think, at a point where we're going to see a, a mass rejection of it. It's not working any longer on the American people. Dan, it's great to see you. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it.